Oh hey there, how's it going and welcome to my power ranking video. I just want to say before we get into it how excited I am to announce that I will once again be personally unsponsored for 2019. This means that you can guarantee yourself that you'll be getting the most unbiased analysis around because who would be even buying my opinion anyways? So please enjoy this video. We'll start at the top and work our way down. In first place is Team Liquid. I'm not going to explain this reasoning at all. For me, second place is going to be C9. Now it's important to know for these power rankings that I'm not rating them based off how they currently are because I actually think Team Liquid will maybe falter a little bit in the beginning. This is much more about where I think they're going to end up and what their kind of potential is as a team. And for Cloud9 being the world semifinalist and changing out their mid laner, who was very pivotal, of course, for getting there, uh, I still think that even if Niski is a downgrade, which I think he is, but not super significant, uh, I think the rest of the team is so strong that they should be just fine. Um, this is another team that might make some falters, uh, but I really trust in Reaper, Jack, and the entire organization to make sure that they are able to kind of succeed like we're used to seeing Cloud9 succeed. Uh, obviously, the, the four remaining members of Sven and Licorice, Sneaky, and Zazel are all beasts, and Niski had a really good split in, in Europe, so I think they will end up being the second team, though they might also, like Team Liquid, have a bit of a, a learning curve to get there. Third place for me is 100 Thieves. Uh, I actually really liked the moves that they made this offseason. I think Huhi and Ryu are similar enough in play style uh, that they're actually not going to need to change up that much from their 2018 uh, play style. I think Huhi is still more of a team-centric player and focused on what the right team decision is. And he's always been a very selfless player, which I think Ryu also had. I think Huhi is a little bit more volatile and willing to play like the risky assassins. I know Ryu had a LeBlanc, but... I mean, you saw uh, who he willing to play things like the uh, Katarina and stuff like that. So I think this will be a good change. I think he's a little bit higher skill mechanically than Ryu was towards the end of his career. Uh, I think he'll be hungry to prove himself, has worked with Afro move before. So I think there's a lot of good things for the who he move. The bang one, I'm a little concerned about how well he'll communicate with the team. But I think AD carry and Marksman is probably the least important one to have a, a perfect communication with right out the gate. Aphromoo will probably be leading the lane no matter what. Uh, obviously, Bang's really good, so I expect this will be fine. This roster um, might have a couple issues, uh, you know, kind of getting over the hump, which is what I think they experienced in 2018 as well. So I don't think they're going to be an actual title contender. Even if they make the finals, hypothetically, they're still my third best team, so they could easily get there. I just don't think that they'll ever end up the number one team. Um, but who knows? Uh, this feels like a very minor upgrade, I think, to their, their 2018 roster, but I still don't think enough to get over the hump with how TL and C9 looked last year. Fourth for me, continuing their trend from uh, last season, will be TSM. I actually like the moves that they made in theory. I think Smoothie as a shot caller and being more aggressive should be good, but uh, Mithy was also known as a shot caller, and it felt like they clashed with Bjergsen. I can very easily see a similar thing happening uh, where there's a more controlled focus play style on some parts of the map but smoothie wants to make a lot of things happen however between acadian broken blade and smoothie i think that that should be enough to kind of get them out of their bad habits of, of sometimes looking for only the optimal play and i think that a lot of these changes will be good i've heard great things about broken blade and scrims i heard he's been doing super super well so i'm, I'm pretty confident uh that they'll be good not sure how great they'll be out the gates i can see tsm uh struggling to find their identity but I really do think that they will be a good team towards the end of the split. And I could see them, them you know, end up fairly high, a fair amount higher or lower than this current rating. I do feel like this team, uh, which is something you don't usually say with Bjergsen on it, has a fair amount of variability on where they'll end up just if Broken Blade actually pans out well, if Smoothie's uh, shot calling uh, addition will really fix some of their inactivity problems as well as whether Grig or Acadian is a big problem. I don't think the, the jungle changeup is that big of a deal. I think Acadian's even maybe a little bit more active in the early game, which could be good for them. Uh, so, you know, I think this is a team that can have a lot of volatility, but also has a lot of talent on it. Sven's still a beast, obviously. So I would say that this team, fourth place, a pretty safe bet. Coming into the middle of the pack now, we got Golden Guardians. And for me, I'm just going to come out and say it. I'm probably a bit of a Golden Guardians naysayer, not really the organization so much as I think a lot of these players that I've seen in recent seasons, I personally don't love the way that they've played. I've always been a little critical of Froggen for being too selfish, too focused on his own lane, uh, 
you know, always seems a bit like a KDA player that gets thrown around. And I, I've, I've heard some grumblings from, from teammates as well. They've, they've had this feeling. Uh, I think he's very hungry to prove himself, though. I think this team, I think everyone, every analyst who has a brain has said that this is kind of like the island of misfit toys type team where all of them are basically coming from the bottom and trying to work their way up. Hans are leaving TSM, Froggen not being on a team last year, Ole getting kicked from TL for double, uh, core JJ, not double JJ. Uh, and then you have Contracts who had that debacle with the Cloud9 organization last year, and then consecutive 10th place finishes with Deftly as well, who has seen his other compatriots in Zazel and uh, Licorice from the Academy days absolutely killing it at C9. So I think this is a team that's very, very, very hungry to prove themselves. And I think out the gate, like, there's almost no one you can look at this roster and probably put them bottom half of the league. Definitely might be the closest, but even he actually played very well last year. So this is going to be a really strong roster, and I think they'll start really well. I just don't know if once other teams start finding their groove and their play style, if this team is going to be able to do the same thing. In theory, it should work. You have two aggressive laners and people who are a little selfish in both Hanser and Froggen, but you also have Ole and uh, Defley who both seem pretty fine not getting a ton of resources and letting things happen elsewhere on the map. And you have Contracts who's very active in the early game as well. So anyways, I can see a play style that works for this team. So it's not like this is one of those rosters where the play style doesn't make any sense. I just don't know if all the attitudes and personalities and if they're all going to agree that's the play style they want. I, I see a fair amount of risk with friction. And, and even then, uh, yeah, I guess, I'm, I guess I'm just a hater. Because I don't really have great reasons other than I don't think it's going to work out that well. Based off what I've previously seen. But, you know, this is an org that I really hope, and for the players, that they, they uh, have a really good showing this split. This one, uh, I might be reaching on compared to what some other people think. But I'm going to put CLG at number 6. The last team in the playoffs according to my power rankings. And I think uh, I was very impressed with Power of Evil uh, last split. I think that's really what's more than anything selling me on this. Uh, he almost dragged uh, Optic somehow into the playoffs at the end of the last split. Mostly through his own sheer willpower. Uh, I think some of the tools he has on this team is better. I think Stixe and Biofrost is a stronger laning duo. Uh, than what you saw with Optic and Big and, and Arrow, who were oftentimes liabilities in laning phase. Uh, and I think they're also still fine outside of them as well. So I think Stixe and uh, Biofrost are an upgrade uh, compared to Optic. I think Wiggly, you know, still out a little bit on him. The jury's not 100% not, uh, aligned. But I think what we saw at the end of the last split, when the last week that he got to play, he looked really good. I think Rainover was such a liability mechanically uh, at this point in his career. Like, I think he obviously is still a god of understanding how to get first bloods and where to be on the map and early pathing. I think that's undeniable how good he was. But after that, he was, he was a big liability in every other area of the game. So Wiggly, just by value of being more mechanically talented, I think should be an upgrade. And Darshan's still Darshan. And this was a roster that just barely missed playoffs last split as well. Uh, you know, they ended up being in the race for a little bit and then stumbling at the end uh, as their, their hopes kind of went away. And I think they got o 2 the last week, but that was kind of like a, oh, well, we don't have a chance anyways, and people were kind of mental boom. So I actually think this team has a good chance of making playoffs if the things work out, which I think they should. The big concern for me uh, is, you know, what happened with the coaching staff and losing Zix and, you know, losing Rainover's voice. Like, I could see this team take a big strategic uh, step back because even though I didn't love Rainover's in-game play, there's no doubt that mentally and strategically he was helping that team's early game a fair amount so I am concerned about this team and how well they'll stack up uh, a little bit in the mid to late game as well as uh, the league's top laners continue to get better and better and better and I think Darshan has been slipping a little bit uh, recently so I'm concerned how well they they will hand up uh, hold up there. Number seven is going to be FlyQuest and I'll come out and say it right away I was surprised FlyQuest was as good as they were last split and so I could very easily be underestimating this team that feels like it made a pretty even move across the board. Pobelter for Keem for me is a massive upgrade. I know a lot of people, myself included, are very critical of Pobelter's international performance, but there's no denying that he's an absolute stud in NA. 
the fact he doesn't take up an import slot and that uh, he's won multiple championships, he can clearly handle himself and opponents in North America. And, you know, I don't think he's going to take a step back at all. I think he's always hungry to prove himself, given that he has that kind of knock that people always have against him about, but international competition. Well, until you get there, he's a beast. Uh, top lane, Viper is scary. He's a young, new player, and he is very, very volatile in his play style. Plays Riven in Academy was what he was most known for. And a couple times he got shut down by Shiro's Poppy and stuff like that. And in playoff play was a liability, I think, for Team Liquid Academy at points. Um, and, you know, when Licorice came in, we had seen him play a lot of tanks, knew he was a good tank player, and that he could play carries. I haven't seen the tank play out of Viper yet, so I'm a little concerned he's going to be completely boomer bust all year long, regardless of meta. Uh, and this is a team that doesn't really have too many super high threats that should be pulling attention away from him. So if he's a liability, people can keep exploiting him because I don't think you need to respond to a master pressure problem from either Poe Belter or Wild Turtle. And like I said, this is probably something where hopefully the organization does a great job. Last year, they had St. Vicious, who JJ at least put a lot of credit towards, and the team environment was supposedly much better than any other team environment. It felt like they kind of carried uh, that through in their games, and that's why they were so good. But with St. getting uh, let go, it's a bit of a question mark for me if that kind of reasoning will apply again this season, that they are going to be such an uplifting team. I'm pessimistic and I'm concerned about the upgrades other rosters have made so that's why for me FlyQuest is just outside of playoffs but want to give a shout out to all the guys from last year proving everyone wrong and this could eat roster could easily do the same thing Santorin, Turtle, and JJ all returning members. Number eight for me is Optic. I think a lot of people are kind of putting them outside the playoff picture. I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, it's just a concern of if there's enough carry potential in the early and mid game and how well they're all going to work together. Uh, we heard great things about Biggs shot calling uh, last year and how much he helped that team kind of turn around and also help make that push along with Power of Evil. Uh, this time around, they have Medios, who's also a veteran, super good at finding advantages in the early game and kind of setting his team up to carry. And then obviously is a big voice in mid to late game because he's been playing for so long. Dokla is still a big question mark for me. I think he's uh, amongst the worst top laners in the league. I think he has his niche that he's better than a lot of the top laners at the league in, which is playing those kind of weird split push focused champions. But I think over the course of an entire split, that's not necessarily a recipe for success. Crown doesn't speak much English from what I know. I know he's played in Brazil, but I also think that he is like the epitome of what you kind of expect out of a Korean player, which is like nonstop work ethic, not about the social life. Uh, you know, doesn't necessarily learn English super quickly. And I've been in an environment where that didn't work out that well. And so I'm very pessimistic about it. Uh, I think, you know, he's going to have a lot of... I don't think he's going to adapt to the North American culture very well. He just doesn't seem like a culture fit. Whereas Arrow is a big goofball who's also on his team. And that's why Arrow adapted pretty quickly to North America, I think. Uh, I hope I'm wrong because I, I love when Crown's good. I love watching his victor, but... He's coming off a pretty weak split in year, all things considered, in uh, Korea. Was splitting time with Fly before kind of getting destroyed at Worlds. Uh, not looking like, even though he's a world champion and obviously has the potential to get back up there, I'm just not convinced it's going to happen, uh, as well as the fact that there's no one to draw pressure away from him on this team. Uh, I think... They have the possibility of if things aren't going well, they can sub Dardock in for Meteos and just get a spark plug in the early game, which sounds nice, but I don't know. I just think this team does not have the very high upside at all. Number nine is Echo Fox, and I'm a little bit torn on this one because they're getting a lot of the core components from Clutch Gaming. Obviously, basically, Clutch and, Clutch and Echo Fox have swapped rosters. With Echo Fox now, you clearly have Apollo, Hakuho, and Solo, which were some of the more consistent members, uh, and then when they were good in spring, a lot of it came down to Febivin carrying uh, and being able to uh, reach that mid to late game. And then from mid to late game, they won a number of games. But they were a team that people always kind of doubted how good they actually were. Uh, and now you're kind of supplementing that Febivin Lyra combo with Rush and Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix is a super volatile player. Everyone knows he's really good mechanically at the game and playmaking, but. Uh, he's not very good about some of the more nuanced points. People always talk about his warding. Um, and so while he and Rush, I think, 
will be a really good duo in terms of playmaking in the early game, while Solo and Apollo and Hakuho mostly stay hopefully even or getting slight leads for themselves. I just can't see this team working well together from a shot calling perspective. I know Apollo and Rush have played together back in the tip days, but I think that uh, this team really lacks late game consistent firepower. Uh, Apollo is great as a secondary carry threat uh, and Phoenix can get his own advantages, but I don't super trust Phoenix in the mid to late game. And I don't super love Apollo's late game team fighting. So I, I have a big concern about how this team is going to close out games, even if the early game actually ends up better than people are expecting. Uh, this is a team that I could easily be proven wrong on. I think this is one of the teams that will have a high potential of outperforming what I'm saying right now. Mentality wise, Apollo and Hakuho seem very chill. Solo can still be a little bit of a rager, and Phoenix and Rush can also be a little uh, tilt prone. So I can see a world where this team also blows up. I think they're, like I said, there's a world where all this stuff works out, and then maybe they get fifth. And then there's a ton of things that can go wrong, and they end up ninth. And I'm betting on the ninth placement. Number 10 for me, and I think this is pretty controversial, is clutch gaming. Because every split Hooney has been in North America, he's made playoffs. Uh, he's always been a beast. And it's hard to imagine a Hooney-led team not being good. It's almost impossible to imagine that. And so I'm probably a little crazy putting them 10. But from a style perspective, this team feels a bit like an atom bomb. And we talked once to Seb Park. The, I think he's the general manager over at Clutch City Gaming clutch gaming and they talked about how they were going for a high variance team and i would definitely agree they have reached high variability this team is boom or bust 100 percent uh they're either 10th place or they are like probably top four um top five you know they're they're either doing pretty good in playoffs or they're i think they're completely going to explode and it was a similar thing i said about echo fox last split uh where i was kind of putting some of that on dardock this time i'm putting it on piglet Piglet's a super aggro player. I think his attitude has gotten a little bit better over the course of the years that he's been in North America, but I don't think his play style has drastically changed. And so he wants jungler attention. He wants resources around him. Huni plays the exact same way. So you have a jungler in Lyra who's coming off a pretty abysmal split who's going to be getting pulled across the map. And then DeMonte in the mid lane who I think is one of the weaker candidates in all of North America for mid laners. So you have two super volatile lanes that are going to be playing volatile champions and wanting resources, a potential weakness in the mid lane, a jungler who hasn't looked that great and might struggle to assist both of them, though they're all Korean, so hopefully they have a nice communication system. You have a very volatile early game, not really much consistency to rely on. So like, even if Huni is getting ahead, it's pretty likely that Piglet will be losing at the same time. Or if Piglet's getting ahead, Huni might be getting chain ganked in the top lane. So I think that this is a team... That is, like I said, top five or number 10, and I'm putting them number 10. That's going to do it for my power ranking video. Uh, I'm excited to be back making YouTube videos. That's a fucking lie. I don't know when the next time I'm going to make a YouTube video is. This was one that I felt like I owed people and people wanted to hear, so there you go. Uh, LCS starts tomorrow, so let's see how right I am right out of the gate. Uh, my favorite thing, as always, is afterwards, people going back and noticing what I got right and wrong. I actually really do enjoy that. So hopefully, uh, end of the split, we're able to take a look back and have a good chuckle about how fourth place clutch gaming is not the 10th place team and this and that. And everyone ignores any nuance that I put in the arguments about how clutch gaming could easily be a fourth place team if everything works out. I'm not saying they're dead set last, but I had them put 10th on this success spreadsheet and on the graphics. So yeah, they're, they're definitely 10th and there's no way it could be anything else. So just flame my ass in four months. Bye.